All right, guys. I promised I would show you this uh, Performer RPM Air Gap Mopar style. All done up. I did put a very aggressive uh, cutter finish on all of it. Why would you do that, Charlie? Because I want to keep that fuel from pouring down the middle and not burning. I want it to remember it's low RPM mid range torque. And it's a good size manifold. So you want to keep that fuel in suspension. Okay, I don't know how much of this you guys are going to be able to see, but very difficult manifold to port because it's quite tall. Tall is good. All right, take a look at how tall it is. Got nice big fat runners. I like it. It's great, great design. All right, it's got beautiful curves. Got to as much as I possibly could get to. Okay, you can see at the very roof there, just can't reach it. Not with six inch burrs. I'm really thinking of getting some custom nine inch burrs made up. But even at that, long curved runners, the curve gets in the way of, of getting to everything. Let's see if we can get some light. Okay. You know, you try to make it, straighten it as best you can. It doesn't pay to have, you know, a real big outlet and tight runners. You don't want to do that because the airflow will be slowing down at that outlet. So, yeah, these are gasket matched to the gaskets that the uh, customer gave me. And the heads are gasket matched to them as well. But luckily they weren't those stupid huge gaskets. It really bothers me when people buy some really big gaskets and then you gasket match it to that. So you have a runner that's relatively small to a huge gasket match, then neck back down in the head. Not good. You do not want the air to be going fast, slowing down, going fast again. You're wasting energy. Okay, different runner. Okay, this is our runner we did our flows on. That's number eight. Yes, it has a big hole in the center where the vacuum bung goes. That doesn't really help flow, but and then again, it doesn't really hurt it much either. Alrighty. Okay, that gives you a good idea what they look like. Now remember, a real rough texture like that will shave a few CFM off. Not, not much. Uh, as far as horsepower, you'll make more power with the fuel atomized than you will with a smooth finish and puddles on it. Okay? Okay. This is what we got. This was a stock head the stock manifold, I believe. Let me double check that, guys. Okay, that's right. So we topped out at like 229 and change, and the manifold knocked it down to 190. That's 40 CFM. And it's a really well designed intake manifold. And it had a good size car, it was a 770 car. So, kind of painful, right? Kind of painful any way you look at it. So, what do you do? You try to make it the best you can. Now, these are the finished heads and the ported intake. So, you can compare them all the way down. We got a gain everywhere. Is it a huge gain? Well, it's 20 CFM. What's 20 CFM worth? At 500. Okay?
it's also interesting what happens to, to your swirls. Right? Your swirl was actually higher on the stalker than the modified one. We still got enough. We're good. You have to remember though, the swirl is going to be a little bit different on every runner because every runner intersects with the cylinder head a little bit differently, right? So they're never all going to be the same. Okay, do I think these numbers would be higher if I made that manifold smooth? Yes, I do. A few CFM. I don't think it would make that big a difference. But uh, I'll take the rough manifold every time. I've done that experiment over and over again and been running rough manifolds since the 80s. Uh, they really work. You know, if you're not carrying fuel in the intake manifold, it's a different story. If it's a direct injection, you don't want rough. Okay? If it's port fuel injected, you don't need a rough intake manifold. Okay? These are important facts. We're running a carb on this. It needs to be rough because we want to keep that fuel in suspension the whole time. Okay, I decided we need to look at this as well. So this was my finished flows, right? We've got 262, which is a good number. Remember, that port is not big. I did not take a ton of metal out of that port. I will do a, a full IOP workup on it when I have the time to do all the measurements and pour it and everything else. But look at how much of a, a beating we take on flow. We lose 50 CFM. And that's with a really good manifold, right? <sighs> kind of painful. The part that is good, though, is... I've done this the same experiment with Chevy stuff, and a Victor Junior on a head that good only flows like 220. So you have to take it into consideration, you know. You can work a Victor Junior up to make it flow really well if you know what you're doing. But still, as far as the intake down low, you know, much less restriction, right? As you start to move more air across it, it starts to drop more and more. Interesting to think about, right guys? Now, if you wanted to do a little bit nastier setup, would a single plane help? A worked single plane probably would, yes. But you're going to wind up moving your power band up considerably. Remember, dual planes are great they give you a nice fat torque curve. We like fat torque curves, especially to move something that weighs 4,400 pounds. Some of the specs he gave me. 360, 4,400 pounds. 28 inch tires, 3.55 gears, lock up tranny. He didn't explain to me which automatic tranny it was. And he sent me a couple Howard's uh, roller cams, which aren't really bad. And uh, the one I liked was the smallest one that was in the catalog. And uh, that would definitely work. We might have do work up on it on the computer and see what it uh, what it'll run. Maybe I'll pull out my dinosaur computer with the uh, performance trends and do uh, do a work up on it. All right, guys. I'm trying to think if I need to tell you anything else. I think we're pretty good. We need some homework with this, though. What kind of homework do we need? Okay. What kind of power have guys made on this manifold? I know what they've made on the Chevy style. This is at least as good, probably better. I would think this, this manifold would make more power than the same version in a Chevy. I have no doubt, actually. So, it's kind of interesting, right? This is what we wound up getting. It's a relatively strong curve through the whole thing. It's not bad at all. I think they're going to work out really well. I think he's going to be very happy with it. Give me your opinion, opinion on that, guys, and uh, whether we should uh, 
even entertain a different intake manifold. Remember, it's going to get a short duration cam. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.